Ever bought a scooter promising 40 miles of range only to run out of juice halfway through your commute? Well, you're not alone. And it's also not your battery's fault. We've been selling and making scooters for over five years now. And we've always felt frustrated at how the e-scooter industry looks at battery range. As a manufacturer, you really have two choices. Number one, show a crazy, unachievable, and unrealistic number and you know appear competitive. Or number two, show a realistic, significantly lower number of miles and be looked down upon. So we decided to do something about it. In this video, we're going to debunk electric scooter range. And because we're Apollo and we have over 10 million miles of log rides in our back end, we can actually do some math and figure out what really drains your battery. More importantly, for each one of these, we will tell you what you can do to maximize maximize your range and come as close as possible to the advertised number that probably convinced you to buy your scooter in the first place. So here's what we did. We reached out to some of our most active riders, shout out to Martin Brenner, and asked them to help us run a real world experiment. We had them record multiple rides using different speed settings, different acceleration levels, and different region brake settings. Some rides were done on hilly terrain, others on flat pavement. We tracked them in cold weather, warm weather, clear skies, and even light rain. We know how much the riders weigh and whether they had kick to start enabled or not. In total, we analyzed over 100,000 miles worth of data. The goal, to isolate exactly which factors drain your battery the fastest and which ones actually help you squeeze out every last drop of range. No lab tests, no ideal conditions, just real people, real scooters, and real results. So to break this down, we looked at one key number, watt hours per mile. That's how much energy your scooter uses to move you a single mile. The higher the number, the faster your battery drains. And by comparing rides across different settings, terrains, and weather conditions, we were able to pinpoint the top five things that eat up your battery the fastest. So number one, let's start with the biggest range killer, speed. We get it. You bought a fast scooter, you want to feel that speed. But here's the problem. Wind resistance increases exponentially. That means every extra mile per hour costs you more than the one before. In our data, the most efficient rides, ones that sipped battery at just 13 to 14 watt hours per mile, stayed under 16 miles per hour. That's still a decent pace. It gets you places fast without torching your battery. Compare that to rides averaging 22 miles per hour. Those jumped to 17 and a half watt hours per mile. And riders cruising at 25 or more, they're burning through over 20 watt hours per mile. So you might be wondering, how much does speed actually cost you in range? Well, let's break it down. The Apollo Go has a 540 watt hour battery. So if you ride at a steady 16 miles per hour, our data shows that you'll use around 13 watt hours per mile. That gives you roughly 41 miles of hypothetical range. But if you push to 25 miles per hour near the max speed limit, your consumption jumps to about 20 watt hours per mile, which just cuts your range down to only 27 miles. That's a 34% drop. So yeah, riding only nine miles faster feels great in the moment, but it means your ride could end 34% sooner. So here's the move. Cruise at 15 to 18 miles per hour for most of your ride and save the top speed bursts for wide open stretches. If your scooter has it like ours do, use cruise control. It helps lock in that efficient speed, keeps your throttle steady, and stops you from creeping faster than you meant to. It's one of the easiest ways to go farther without even thinking about it. Number two, acceleration. More specifically, how hard you hit the throttle. So when you go full throttle from a standstill, your scooter draws a big spike of power from the battery. That quick launch might feel fun, but it's one of the most inefficient ways to ride. So let's talk numbers. In our testing, riders using max acceleration settings, level 10, were averaging up to 18 watt hours per mile in urban stop and go conditions. Meanwhile, riders who dropped their acceleration level to five and rode the same route averaged closer to 15 watt hours per mile. That's a 15 to 20% improvement in efficiency just by easing off the launch. And here's a bonus tip that most people overlook. Use kick to start mode. Instead of pulling power from the motor at zero miles per hour, kick to start lets you give your scooter a gentle push before the throttle kicks in. That small push means the motor isn't fighting inertia alone, so it draws less energy. It's hard to measure precisely, but based on motor response and power curves, kick to start can save around three to 5% off your battery over a full ride, especially if you stop frequently. So here's the move. Turn your acceleration down a few notches and enable kick to start. It takes a tiny bit of effort, but you'll get up to 25% more range without sacrificing your ride quality. Number three, let's talk about peak power. Those big surges in wattage when you hit the throttle hard, climb a hill or power through a headwind, let's say. These moments are short, but they hit your battery hard. Think of it like sprinting. You can only run flat out for a short while before you're gasping for air. Your scooter works the same way. Rapid acceleration and power spikes might feel fun, but they're brutal on your range. So here's where the Apollo app 
comes in handy. On the dashboard, you'll see real-time power readout measured in kilowatts. From our data, the most efficient rides stayed in the 0.4 to the 0.6 kilowatt range while cruising. But the second that number consistently spiked above 1.1, riders saw their battery drain up to 20% faster. So if you want to stretch your range, Pay attention to that number. Ease off the throttle when accelerating. Coast when you can. And if you see that power readout regularly pushing past 900 watts, dial it back. Your battery will thank you. Number four, underusing region braking. Region braking is like coasting downhill in a hybrid car. It slows you down while putting power back in your battery. Most scooters have it, but Apollo scooters, they take it to the next level. We're the only brand with a dedicated region throttle. So instead of awkwardly pulling a brake lever, you can gently press down with your thumb. It gives you precise controlled braking and captures more energy because you're actually encouraged to use it. And since most of our scooters are dual motor, you get twice the region braking power, both wheels working to slow you down and recharge at the same time. So how much does it actually help? In stop and go urban riding, region can recover up to 5% of your battery. That's a couple of extra miles just by braking smarter. Just make sure your region level is set to at least five or higher in the app for optimal performance. It won't replace charging, but it's free energy when you're braking regardless. And with Apollo, it's easier and more powerful than anywhere else. Number five, elevation gain. This one is simple physics. Going uphill takes energy and a lot more than riding on the flat ground. So even small elevation changes can make a big dent in your battery. From our data, rides with frequent climbs saw efficiency drops from 13 watt hours per mile to over 17 watt hours per mile, a 30% increase in consumption. And if you're riding in a hilly city or taking a scenic detour through elevation, well, expect your range to shrink fast. The bigger catch, unlike speed or acceleration, you can't always avoid hills, but you can ride them smarter. So here's what you can do. Ease into the climb. Aggressive throttle from a dead stop on a hill is a double drain, high current plus gravity. Switch to a lower gear or eco mode if your scooter supports it. Less torque equals less strain. Bottom line, if you've got a 540 watt hour battery and you're burning 17 watt hours per mile, you'll just get 31 to 32 miles instead of your advertised 40 plus. Plan your route accordingly and use region braking to claw some of that energy back on the way down. That brings us to the end. So how do you get that range that's precisely printed on the box? Well, the truth is you probably don't. Unless you're riding really slow on flat roads in warm weather, barely accelerating, and you weigh 100 pounds. Well, let's be real. That's not how anybody uses their scooter. That's why we made this video, to show you that manufacturers technically aren't lying to you, but they sure are stretching the truth. So here's how you can fight back. Keep your speed in check. Riding around 50 miles per hour instead of 25 can save you up to 35% more range. Ease off the throttle. Lowering your acceleration settings and using kick to start can improve efficiency by 10 to 15%. Watch your power spikes. Stay under 0.9 kilowatt on the power meter and avoid flooring it on hills. That'll get you another 10 to 15%. Use region braking. It won't double your range, but it can add back three to 5% on stop and go rides. And with Apollo's region throttle and dual motors, you're getting the most out of it. Respect the hills. Elevation can eat up 30% more battery. So take it slow on climbs and let region recover what it can on the way down. No single tip is a magic fix, but together they add up. Do all five and you could boost your real world range by up to 40% or more. That brings you a whole lot closer to that number that convinced you to buy the scooter in the first place. If you like this video and want more deep dives like this, where we take millions of miles of real world ride data and turn it into insights that help you get the most out of your scooter, make sure you subscribe. We're just getting started. And if there's a question you've always had about range, performance, maintenance, or anything else, just drop it in the comments. We might just turn it into our next video.